Dad, blast it! <laughs> look, plumber's crack. What did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. All right, wise guy. Shouldn't you be on one of them escape Good day, trains? I'm your humble narrator, Sideways Thinker, and I'm just here with another episode of That There Enigmatic Entity, a series in which I discuss the more uncanny video game characters. In this particular outing, I'll be discussing a recurring and comedic character to be found in the Insomniac Games series, Ratchet and Clank. A brief warning I bring to this episode. Due to the nature of this character, there will doubtless be spoilers for the entire Ratchet and Clank series, so if you do not wish to have the series spoiled for you, stop watching the video now. With that out of the way, let us get on with the video. The Ratchet and Clank series, for the unaware, is a series of platforming titles with a heavy emphasis on overpowered and often very silly weaponry. You play as the titular Ratchet, occasionally briefly swapping over to playing as the titular Clank, as you shoot and jump your way through various planets and various galaxies in order to defeat the various evil villains of the day. So far, the series contains 11 games, and the character we are dealing with appears in 9 of these, or 10 if you count his mention in Ratchet Deadlocked. If you haven't guessed already, the character we are dealing with today is the Plumber. The Plumber has been a recurring character in the Ratchet and Clank universe since the first game, as seen in the clip we opened with. His purpose is unknown, but it does usually serve to provide the player characters with various important items that they need for their quest in that particular game, usually given in return for a set amount of bolts. He's a member of the unnamed Blue Species found throughout the first Ratchet and Clank game, though they appear considerably less in the games following. His first appearance is early on in the first Ratchet and Clank game, rather self-explanatorily named Ratchet and Clank. In this encounter, he is found fixing a pipe on the planet Novalis while it is being bombed into submission by Blarg forces. After a mild joke at his expense, he sells the duo an infobot for 500 bolts, before leaping down another, larger pipe away from the scene. He is then later found on the planet Batalia, a heavily militarized world also under attack by Blarg forces. This time, he is found fixing a heavy turret, and is willing to sell Ratchet and Clank a metal detector that he claims his grandfather invented to find loose change. It may be interesting to know Note that in the first game, the plumber was not named the plumber, rather he was named the mechanic in the game's own objective screens. Hey, I know those pants. And sarn it, here's the problem. His second appearance is, rightfully enough, in the second game. This time, he claims that he has been called out to the Bogon Galaxy, the first game taking place in the Solana Galaxy, in order to fix a clogged drain on the ship found flying on planet Aranos. The blockage was caused by a Captain Quark action figure, which can be traded to the character Stuart Zergo, known at this point only as a rabid fanboy of the aforementioned Captain Quark, for a bounty of 20,000 bolts and an armor magnetizer, an item used to collect bolts with greater ease. Whoa! Deja vu! Ow! Oh, it's you two again! His third appearance is, as one would expect, in the third game in the series, in which he is hip deep in slime in the sewers of planet Aquatos, now returned to the Solana galaxy. He claims that his purpose there is to collect sewer crystals, so that he can make some jewellery, I assume, for his wife. He then pays Ratchet for every sewer crystal rendered. So far, there is very little to suggest anything unusual or strange regarding the plumber beyond him being a recurring character and relatively comic, just one of the vast host of comic and recurring characters to be found in this particular series. The most unusual thing to be said about the plumber thus far is that he is something of a deus ex machina, appearing out of nowhere in order to provide the player with essential or useful items with little to no explanation before very quickly becoming irrelevant. Again, several characters exist in these games to fill this role, but the plumber is the only one who is seen doing it consistently and in very much the same manner. Regardless, in the early series, the plumber seems to be a recurring character and nothing more. As we move further from the original trilogy of games, he continues to appear, though slightly less frequently. He does not appear in Ratchet Deadlocked or Ratchet Gladiator if, like me, you live in Europe, but is mentioned in the ending credits. He also appears for a small cameo in Ratchet's Dream Time in Ratchet and Clank's Size Matters. He again shows up in Secret Agent Clank, but if I may be frank, the less said about that game, the better. Oh, dear. oh it's you two! Almost didn't recognize you in high def. <laughs> As we again move further from the original series and into the Ratchet & Clank Future series, he continues to show up, though this time his nature is brought more keenly into question. His first appearance in this series is on planet Sargasso, in Tools of Destruction. Ratchet & Clank stumble upon him as he is finishing his work on the creation of what he describes as a high-speed interplanetary transportation gizmo. Shortly after finishing his work, he throws a plot-critical item to Clank before flushing himself away out of the game. Oh, it's you! You gave the old ticker a start! What are you doing all the way out here? These are my memory banks. Your memory banks? Oh, I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. I thought I was in that green fella's head, what with all the emptiness. Oh, well, no matter. <laughs> 
he appears yet again in Ratchet and Clank A Crack in Time, this time showing up in the strangest place yet, in Clank's mind. He claims that he was attempting to get into Quark's mind, and indeed assumed that he had, due to the sheer emptiness of the place. He again gives Clank something of plot critical importance, though in place of an item, this time the plumber gives Clank the seemingly meaningless advice to not risk any more than six minutes. While meaningless at the time you receive the advice, it becomes deeply important at the end of the game. This appearance is one of the major hints as to the bizarre nature of the plumber. If you fellas are done, I'm gonna need that wrench back. He then appears once more in Ratchet and Clank All for One, in which he saves the group, which now also includes Captain Quark and series villain Dr. Nefarious, from a freezing death. When asked by Ratchet if he has any advice on defeating Nevo, the plumber simply states that he doesn't have any of that kind of advice, and then winks, perhaps hinting that he knows that the true villain is not Nevo, but rather the creature known as the Loki Master. He also appears again in the most recent title, Full Frontal Assault, or Q-Force, if you, like me again, are in Europe. However, I have no idea what he does in this game as I haven't seen or heard anything of it. Overall, I think it is fairly safe to say that there is very little to theorise about in regards to the plumber. In the early series, he was little more than a recurring comic character with a habit of breaking the fourth wall. As the series progressed, the developers began hinting at a more supernatural element to him, despite never explaining it, only placing little nods and winks to make the player interested. It could be read that the plumber is a kind of god in the Ratchet & Clank universe. This would certainly explain his ability to appear anywhere and know seemingly everything. It has also been theorised by some that the plumber could be the secret identity of the missing Max Apogee. This is very quickly proven foolish by the fact that Max Apogee's daughter features heavily in Quest for Booty and Tools of Destruction, and is clearly an entirely different species from the plumber. I myself think that the plumber is little more than a comic deus ex machina with a face, and something of a personification of the will of the developers, his comedic behaviour and hintings of a supernatural origin simply being tools used to obfuscate his existence as a pure plot device. Well, that's going to have to be all from me for now. I've been your humble narrator sideways thinker, and as always, Keep calm and carry on. Good day. Are you coming? Plumbers don't just go diving down strange pipes all willy-nilly. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs>